All right. Good afternoon once again, ladies and gentlemen. So, I realized the other day that I had uh, started a game, and being that this is introductory, if you're new to Long War from uh, regular XCOM, or regular Enemy Within, I realized that having a bunch of mods up and having a special set of circumstances into the game uh, from the second wave options, you didn't really get to see, taste, feel, understand, and regret what is the air war. So what I wanted to do today is I wanted to do a quick and dirty summary of what the air war is. Now, the air war is something that's just honestly kind of a you like it, you hate it, you really hate it, you despise it, you wish it was never there version or portion of Long War. Now the main thing you need to get used to is just honestly the fact that the Long War air combat is significantly more brutal. In the core game, once you start getting better weapons, I mean, honestly, in the core game, especially on difficulties like normal or easy, you can basically fi fly fighters with, with lasers and you're good for very long portions of the game. And in fact, you can fly with just basically the base missiles for a long portion of the game, the avalanches, and not have a problem. That said, once you got to a firestorm, and a firestorm with plasma on it, it's over. I, in the core game, I have never, never built fusion lances, because why? What can you not shoot down? Okay? Also, you have to get used to the fact that your fighters are going to get tore up. You're not going to immediately get to send fighters up over and over again, all right? They're going to have to be repaired for days at a time after combat. Now, there is a light side to all of this, though, that you need to understand. It's a really core thing to understand with the air game, which is you don't have to shoot them down to win. You only have to get them to about half hit points before they run off and they don't achieve what they're going to do. Now there are several different types of missions that can come in. Scouts will come in, they're easy to shoot down, but if you don't shoot them down, they bring in bigger things. Um, on the other hand, you're going to deal with some ships that even at the late game, you, you basically don't stand very much good chance of shooting down. Um, also, as the enemy gains tech, and if you're unfamiliar with Long War, the enemy techs up based on how many countries they have. If you let them have too many countries, they're going to outrun you in everything. But even so, even with two or three countries, or even one, they're going to gain some. They're going to tech up over time. And eventually, some ships that you were able to shoot down are going to become ships that are hard to shoot down. Now, I've loaded a save so we can demonstrate some of this, and this is fairly late game. Okay, if you uh, we go over here and we look at my aircraft hangers, I've got a lot. I've got three firestorms in Africa. Africa my bad base in this one. Uh, North America's got a firestorm right now. Got tons of fighters. They're significantly well trained, all in all considering. Lots of them. You're gonna notice there's tons of fighters. Four to six over your the, any area you want to defend until you get firestorms is what you're looking at wanting to keep whatever you can afford um, this is also why controlling North America is significant to the air game not always achievable but once you get that bonus alright the air support superiority bonus aircraft and aircraft weapons cost 25% less to purchase and maintain you can field a lot more fighters 
a lot easier. It's a lot easier on your bank account. Okay? Next thing you're gonna notice on the map going on right now, this is actually doing pretty good for later game. Remember, you can recover countries. Alright, and this much is honestly not that bad of a terror level. This is recoverable. This isn't going to risk a chance Things of you heating up out there. leaving, Tracking or having the, not you leaving, but having the, the country leave you. Okay? Um, if you don't know that, if whenever, if you have a maxed out country in Long War, whenever your month ends, there's a chance for them to leave. Alright? They don't just have, necessarily have to cap out. Alright, that's not necessarily what happens. And when they cap out, it's not immediately they're gone. And once they're gone, you can eventually take countries back. And you're going to have to do that, honestly, if you want to survive. So losing countries, not that big of a deal. Also, you're going to have, have to understand that the aliens tend to get obsessed with a continent. Okay, they... Whether that's just... Program in to be show that they're obsessed with getting something, or if it's program in to show You've been at it for days that now. All I can think about is my bunk. they really want to defend what, what they keep, they have an idea, of, or if there's a strategy to it. But that's what I've tended to notice: is they like to go for particular areas. The first co uh, country they captured in this game was America, North America. So I went in, and eventually I got it back. I wanted the air war built my way from there. Okay? I wanted to be able to afford to put fighters everywhere, and they have just attacked this relentlessly. And you're going to see how relentlessly, honestly, in this. And at this point in the game, I'm setting up to try and capture all the uh, remaining countries. Alright? That's the point I'm setting up in here. Whether or not you want to do that, unless you have the uh, second war option for that, you don't necessarily have to do that. But, let's be honest, you kind of, if you're a completionist, you kind of do want to do that. Alright, especially if you've been in this game for months at a time. And at this point, I've been in this game for a while. If you want to get some sort of idea how long you're talking about in a regular game, when you look at some of my people, like Zhang here, who's been around forever, and you look at their missions and their kills, they've been in. And remember, these guys rotate out. So, once again, you kind of get in that completionist mode. But anyway, we're talking about the fighter game. So let's go back. We're going to pop the hollow globe here. Looks like we've already got a friend. Contact detected. Terror ships. You think a firestorm is going to shoot down everything. It is not the solution to all of your problems. It's just it's just not. It's not the solution. It's going to hurt you a lot. So, how are you going to handle things like this? For a terror ship, a firestorm on balanced, and you proc all the things you can. Now, remember we talk about, really quickly, the uh, little one-use items that you could build in the core game, but you never really use because why in the world would you need that? Well, you need them now. Okay, especially when you have fighter, or when you have capital ships coming in. When your assault carriers and your battleships come in, you're going to need multiple firestorms and you're probably going to need to proc those one-use items. Okay, so do not, early game, sell off all your dead cyber disks. Okay? Alright, so let's launch a firestorm. Enemy is padlocked. Closing on... Now, we almost got it down, and notice I pulled away. I did not win this. Now, it's over 50% gone. This thing is probably not going to stick around. It's probably going to leave. But, you know, let's just say, for example, that we want to try to shoot it down. Now, a regular fighter, you've seen how much damage is going back and forth. Firestorms have a lot of hit points. I'm thinking I'm going to go in with a defensive strategy on this. 
We have eyes on the bandits. Nearing strike rate. Alright, and very nicely. It's still pretty much ate at my fighter a pretty good amount. You can see how well that would have gone if I sent a fighter up and not a firestorm against the stair ship. Alright. Now you'll notice I don't get a ship to invade. Now the reason for this is because you can completely blow up a ship. And if you do so, they give you a lump sum of money for it. Which is honestly, in my opinion, kind of the second worst outcome that you can have from a successful or from intercepting. The worst is obviously you go up there and you get shot down. Alright, the third worst thing is you can go up there and you don't shoot it down and runs away. Best outcome is you shoot it down, you get to raid it, and you get all that delicious Illyrium, which is what you really want. Or you get you send up a fighter and um, with EMP, and then you get even more. That is the best outcome scenario. So we're gonna go back to scan. We're gonna see what else pops up. All right, we're not worried about that right now. We're just looking at some fire stuff. Our satellite is prepped and standing by for launch. We are ready to deploy it on your orders. All right, so we've got a fighter coming in. Now, fighter is give or take. Once again, something that we might be able to take with a regular fighter with the right stuff. Um, it's an air raid, so it's going to try to cause some terror. So when that kind of thing happens, I really want to get in there and try to take it down. If at all possible. So let's see what we could do. Now, once again, we haven't got a lot of people down, so I'm going to say we're going to need to probably launch in. Let's see if I can't launch in on defensive. Let's see if I can't run it away. Because right now I'm kind of short on fighters over here, but I don't want to let them bomb America. America's already a Bangs little bit out. terrified. Approaching target now. So we're going to drop our dodge in. When you're on defensive, you cannot use aggressive things like your aim modifier. Alright. I think it might be worth it to send up a weaker fighter and see if we can't finish that off. That would be my call here. Contact detected. Because honestly, this guy needs some kills. And I just feel like it's the right decision for this. You're going to have to make these kind of calls. Because sometimes it's going to be a better decision to just let this go away. But what else is this fighter going to shoot down? Engaging bogey. Right now, he's very low in the training for this time of the game. Closing on target. And that worked beautifully. That is exactly what we wanted to happen. All right. Now, Hyperwave Relay is going to start telling you late game what's in there. You don't get the benefit of this for quite some time. Alright, we're not looking at that right now. Alright, we're just kind of looking at the air game. So I'm just going to kind of let a lot of this ground combat skip, and we're not going to save this, you know, for this game. Right, this is just looking at our fighter combat. Detected. Assault Carrier. The Assault Carrier is over Brazil. What do I have over Brazil? I have a bunch of untrained fighters. So yeah, you can kind of imagine how that might go. But we're going to look at it anyway because once again we're not saving this and yeah. Now one thing I'd like to mention is I'm using on this, the only thing I'm using that's different from the core is I'm using a mod uh, for this that extends the uh, length of fighter interception. The only thing this changes is it makes the uh, air combat the length of interception twice as long as it normally would be, and it halves the damage. So the overall damage for percentage time of it is the same. The What's good about this though is, is that if you do not use this mod, and I highly recommend you use this mod, there's a lot of times that a, that something that an alien ship is going to crit on your fighter and you do not have the option of saving it. Or you cannot pull them back quick enough. Okay, it takes a few seconds. You hit the abort, they're 80% hit points, and it takes them dot 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 second to pull out, and they get shot down. Or 
you send up a fully healthy fighter uh, against something bigger, hoping to just kind of peck on it, and I'll explain why you want to peck on it, and they shoot, they crit, it's shot down one thing. You've lost them with a lot of kills. All right? You don't want that to happen. And this gives you the option. This gives you more control. This balances things out so that it adds a little bit more. Your skill is going to matter more as opposed to and your understanding of the air combat is going to matter more as opposed to just flipping a coin and hoping things work. Now, I mentioned pecking at things. All right, If you damage an enemy fighter when you send them up, even a little bit, it reduces the terror they cause for letting them go or for whatever they do. So sometimes you just want to get up, hit them once, and get away. Especially if you can't handle them, you can't deal with them. Okay, because refreshing a fighter is much better than rebuilding parts of it. All right, um, and it's better to pack on them than it is to let them go if you can do it. Once again, you have to let a lot of let a lot of these alien ships go. It's just how this works. You're not meant to win them all. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to send up our fighter against the assault carrier in defensive, and we're going to hope that we do not instantly die. Now, with this mod, that shouldn't happen. We're in pursuit. But fingers crossed. Nearing strike range. Heavy fire. No joy here. All right. I basically just maybe scratched it a little bit. It doesn't even show up. But I touched it. That's kind of what matters. It's a game of tag. Notice how I basically did nothing with this. The guy with laser guns on a ship, in defensive, fired it off, got a few clean hits. Basically did nothing to an assault carrier. Nearly got shot out of the sky. That's Long Wars air game. You need to send fire storms up against these kind of things. Alright. If you run into an assault carrier or a battleship or anything really well armed, then my suggestion is to try not... You're basically going to have to make decisions early game whether you want to try to peck at it, which is probably a poor decision early game, or just let it go. Okay, whatever it's going to do is probably not as bad as losing a fighter. Fighters are expensive, and they're, the experience they get from remaining alive is invaluable. You can't even calculate how good that is. Alright. So we've got a landing. Now, once again, this gives us to another thing. If you let fighters, or if you let enemy ships go, a lot of times they'll land on their own. You can kind of begin to figure out what they're going to do. All right, it will tell you, and we'll look at some of these. Contact detected. Now, before you get the hyperwave, a lot of times, or most of the time in fact, you won't get to know very often until later in the game what type of ship you're fighting, but once you've shot one down, you can identify it. But they will tell you before, they will tell you where it's flying at. Okay? So they might be flying low to the ground, they might be flying up high. If they're flying up high, they're probably coming after a satellite, and you want to kind of take them down. Scouts you want to kind of get rid of so that they do not find your satellites. Because usually the ship they send to shoot down your satellites is more difficult. All right, now once again, we have a battleship. It's on an air ray. That means it's going to come in to bomb and cause terror. It's a battleship. I have got nothing here that can help but I can try to reduce the terror. And that's about the best I can do. So that's what we're going to do. Enemy is padlocked. We just want to scratch Launching it. Target now. They're all over us! Disengaging. All right. We don't want to go up long against that fusion lance. All right, and that worked. That's basically what we want to see. Alright, now once again, here we've got a battleship. Now, very often, you want to reserve your firestorms for this kind of situation. This is a battleship coming in at high altitude to destroy a satellite. And even if I had anything besides my battle, or even if I had anything else, any of my higher ranked killers on here, they wouldn't stand a chance. I could send up a ton of them, probably wouldn't work. 
Now you might get to some magical point late in the game when you can afford to equip all of your fighters with plasma weapons, but I didn't really get to that point. So these fighters are basically meant for other things. And there's a very, very little chance that I'm going to have any chance of running it off, even, with fighters. Now, I might be able to burn a bunch of consumables, but more than likely, that's not what's going to happen. So in this case, we just kind of have to deal with the fact that we're going to lose the satellite. This is why I highly recommend that you keep a nice array of spare things on hand. Notice I have five extra satellites on hand. Now at some point I want to use those satellites to launch and I want to take over the rest of the world and get it all back under my dominion, so to speak. But until that time, I need to keep a bunch of extra just for situations like this. Command Overwatch. This is about as well armed as you can imagine any ship. And honestly, you kind of got to hope it's it eventually patrols over an area where you could shoot it down. Because you're going to have to shoot this down eventually at least one time. <coughs> but you're probably going to need at least two firestorms to do it and probably some consumables. It's really well equipped. Now, this is flying over Europe, and obviously, I got nothing. Now, it's basically not going to do anything, more than likely. So, we just kind of let, let that, let that go. Once again, we lost our satellite. It increased our panic. So, how do we handle that situation? Well, you've got extra satellites. Okay, the United States hasn't left yet. It hasn't gone yet. Let's launch one of our spare satellites over the United Satellite States. Launched. And lo and behold, we got all that back. Okay? Not a panic. Not a problem situation. You prefer not to lose it because it's hard to keep your tear down in a country. But it's not a big deal if it gets shot down. you got to accept your losses with your wins. Especially in the air game. Contact detected. We got an abductor. I could scramble some interceptors. I don't think it would do very well against them. We might be able to lower some tear down. But once again, we're just looking at the air combat, so I'm going to show you what it would look like. We're going to send up somebody who's got a fairly good amount of kills, but probably not my ace fighter pilot. Let's send up this guy. He's going to be on defensive. Let's see what we can do against an abductor. The long flight across to Russia. We have eyes on the bandit. I have no consumables I can burn here. Closing on target. We lost the bubble. All right, we did a little damage. It's something. Obviously, if we send a ton, we're still not going to take it down. So we pinked it a little bit. And besides, it's an abduction mission. Abduction missions are no problem. They are okay. Let's keep scanning. We've got a terror mission. We didn't see the ship coming because we don't have a satellite currently. Still takes a couple days to get there. Now, if we let that go, then obviously uh, we're going to lose this country. It's just gone. All right. If you let a terror mission go, you lose country. Now, you can get a country back, but engaging in that terror mission is going to be a better option every time. All right. Unless you just have all of your people injured and you shouldn't get to that point. But we're just going to let it go. Because once again, we're looking at the air game. We're not talking about the ground game right now. This is all about the core air game. Contact detected. Once again, we got an abductor. Couldn't take it over there. Do we have to realize when you take this? Take uh, any ship. And we can't, so we just normally let it land. Alright? And then we'd send a mission. That's basically what we do there. All right, another thing I talked about is late game, you start getting these, and I'm just gonna do a little sidestep here, just in case you're watching from the core. Um, notice that I'm getting sergeants for these kind of trades. Capturing 
Huge. Anything you can get a hold of. Alright? Anything you can get a hold of. You can trade. And two tech or two sergeants. Okay, it's basically rank three or four, I believe. You guys for free. It's a huge deal later on. This is where you're gonna get your rookies from. Late game, not from rookie rookies. Right. Now, in the interest of not making this super long. Contact detected. We're probably gonna look at only one more. I said over the United States. We're probably only gonna look at Contact detected. One more thing. Let's see if we can uh, get a ship to appear over Africa. Our failure to respond to the latest UFO contact is sure to displease the council. One of our top priorities is to maintain satellite coverage over the council. Once again, they really like everywhere but my home place. Well, this is this will work. This will work for a last one. We've got a small UFO. It's a scout. Your scouts should be attainable to kill with regular fighters, no problem. So, let's talk about how we're going to do that. I'm going to say defensive. Um, I'm going to try to get my lower kill fighters some kills to make them a little bit more experienced. Bangs out. Nearing strike range. Now, regular fighter, uh, laser weapons, and no cool or no burns on anything. No uh, dodges, tracks, or aim bonuses. We did it on defensive. We got it down. It's exactly how we want it to go out. We don't get to uh, go after the ship because it just completely destroyed. We get some money for it. And honestly, that's kind of where you're going to be for a lot of the game. A lot of the game, early in the game, you're going to be sending up multiple fighters for single UFOs, single scouts, single uh, destroyers. Later game, you're going to have to a more varied array of weapons. Now, one thing to keep in mind, or I mentioned this earlier, you're going to need these cooldown items. You're going to be able to burn, or these burnable items later game. Your dodge. If you'll notice, for example, on the dodge, it requires cyber disc wrecks. If you're selling your enemy's corpses, make sure you do not sell cyber disc wrecks because you're going to want a lot of dodges. Okay, boosts I can give or take. I've built four of them. I or four or five of them. I think I used one. Drone wrecks. Eh, give or take. Your call. I've honestly, if I feel like I, in long war the enemies are vicious enough that you either win within the allotted amount of time, or you need to retreat in a allotted amount of time. You almost never need more time. Alright? You just don't. You're either winning that or you're losing it. Uh, the aims? Very useful. These are much easier to obtain. I feel like you see a lot more floaters than you see cyber discs. Okay? But still, build as many of these as you can. You always want to be able to aim. Now remember, you cannot use the uh, targeting aim unless you're in your aggressive or your balance stance. You, you can't use it in defensive. Um, equal but opposite side of the thing. Dodge, you can use it in defensive or balance, but you cannot use it in aggressive. Alright? Um, the dodge boost is basically enough of a boost that you're going to guarantee for its duration you're probably not going to get hit. On the other side, uh, the aim is almost a guaranteed hit. If you're using the lasers on your basic ships, for example, lasers are really accurate, you're going to get a lot of hits in. Now, the next thing, and it's not been a huge deal for me, but some weapons are better at, for in the air game, some weapons have a lot more penetration, and some weapons have uh, for armor, for armored ships, and some are better at non-armored ships, basically. I basically stuck with just 
your basic outload on fighters for most of the game. And it wasn't a huge deal for me. I basically stuck with my basic avalanche missiles. So, give or take, um, you can switch over. Your avalanche missiles don't have a lot of armor penetration. Their damage is medium, their fire rate is slow. Your uh, stingray missiles, on the other hand, in comparison, they have long range as well. They are very slow to fire as well. Their damage is lower, but their armor penetration is higher, which means the damage reduction is going to matter less for them. I never really switched over. I won't lie to you. That might be a lazy maneuver, but I didn't. Um, I built a couple of Phoenix cans. <coughs> Excuse me. And honestly, I didn't use them very much. I kind of really started picking up, though, on laser cannons. Alright, once I got to the laser cannon, they're medium penetration, medium damage, their fire rate is rapid, they have long range, they have really good accuracy. If you look at something like the Stingrays, alright, 35, 50, 65% accuracy, your Phoenix Cannon, 35, 50, 65%, your Avalanche, 35, 50, 60, your lasers, 50, 65, 80, they hit better. Alright? And that, honestly, that's consistency. I like consistency. Alright, consistency in whatever ship comes, I'm kind of in the middle range. That's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, as for, uh, I don't know if we can look at our different weapons. Uh, plasma cannon. We can look at our plasma cannon stats. Probably not, it takes a lot of... But okay, your plasma cannon is just your big boy destroyer up to an extent. It's the second best weapon you're going to find. Fusion Lance is still the best. Fusion Lance is still just a knock them out of the sky, end all be all kind of weapon. Your EMP cannon bypasses a lot of armor, it feels like. Um, also, you get to recover ships and you get to recover them in more complete bodies. Now, that said, for uh, that, there's another thing to take into consideration. For your late game. If I go and I look at what it takes to build these weapons, the EMP cannon takes a sectopod wreck. You're gonna run into a lot of sectopods. That you're gonna run into pods of sectopods. Podception. So you're gonna have a lot of these, and they're not super expensive. This isn't cheap by any means, but once again, they're a top tier weapon that you could get pretty uh, available. It's pretty available for you. You're going to have a, a lot of ease. Once you start looking into other things, for the uh, Fusion Lance. Fusion Lance car is a fusion core. As far as I know, you can only get a fusion core from shooting down a battleship or doing the uh, DLC mission to capture a battleship. And on that, you can get two. Okay, and you have a Fusion Lance you can make, or you have a uh, fusion core, you can either make a fusion lance, or you can make a blaster launcher with it. Both are highly useful. But you're probably never going to need more than two blaster launchers. Maybe three. Let's see. And finally, we have the plasma cannon. Plasma cannon requires an alien rifle. In Long War, to get an alien rifle, you must capture an alien. You must tase an alien with an alien rifle. Alright, so if you want to make one of these, you're going to have to bring a muton home or something that has an alien rifle, like, what, I think a heavy floater at some point they get them. You're going to have to take some aliens home. So, once again, huge on capturing. And that's another thing. Remember, capturing is more important than this if you want alien weapons. It's just going to be that way. So... Once again, Plasma Cannon, nice mid-range bad boy to get a hold of. You're going to have to capture some aliens to uh, get there. You're going to have to capture a lot of aliens. Even for the tech, you're going to have to capture aliens. Your Fusion Lance, you're going to have to shoot down some big boys, or you're going to have to capture them, or capture, uh, do the uh, DLC to capture one. But the EMP Cannon, the EMP Cannon just requires a Sectopod. You're probably going to have to kill tons of Sectopods anyway. So it's probably going to be your easiest bet for your upgrade from lasers. That's just my advice there. So, once again, I just wanted to 
take time and talk about the air game in depth. Uh, you don't get to see it a lot while we're doing a playthrough. It's, you know, maybe two or three or four intercepts are going to happen in a two to three hour period if you're playing the game properly and you're just going through and you're doing the missions. And I wanted you to see kind of how the air game works, especially late game. I wanted to see wanted you to see how that's going to work. Okay, once you get some idea, because more experience and more visual understanding is going to help you in that. Alright, so, once again, um, the, I'm uh, playing the game that I'm going to be running through to uh, get everybody introduced into Long War. I'm going to be running different mods to where I'm not going to be dealing with as much. Now, you've seen the mod today about extended length of intercept. I recommend highly that you get that. It will make you not have to reload your game a bunch over bad crits. If you're playing, if you want to play Iron Man, I, I honestly beg you to get it. Because you can't reload, and sometimes the alien ships just crit. Or sometimes you just miss a bunch, things go bad, and you think you're going to be able to handle it, and you get shot down anyway. Alright, those crits come out of nowhere. You're going to notice it if you don't use this mod. You're going to get crit and just blown out of the sky a bunch. Okay, and there's some things that can just ruin your game. If you lose a guy with 9 kills, 8 kills, 7 kills, 6 kills, uh, depending on how early the game is, it's huge. Don't let that happen. Uh, getting a firestorm shot down, that's huge because, once again, let's look over here. Uh, Firestorm, 120 Illyrium, 180 Alloys, 10 Meld, 4 UFO Power Sources, 8 UFO Flight Computers. They cost a lot. They get high-ranking guys in them. Losing one of these is a huge mistake. Alright? With this mod, you're going to be able to spread out how much damage you take. You're going to be able to calm back and not lose them in the blink of an eye. Okay? It's going to help. I recommend it. Especially if you're Iron Manning it. Um, but yeah, uh, also, I when you're doing your, your tech, to support the research team, Commander. I suggest Before you get to lasers as quickly to as possible. Because lasers are going to make your air war better. And lasers are nice. Lasers... We've got our laser cannons really quickly. Less than a hundred bucks right now. Thirty alloys. Okay. Nice weapon. It's gonna carry you into the late game. Um, once you look at foundry things, and I guess I didn't talk about that, uh, but really quickly, don't want to stretch out your time too much. You're gonna get a couple of things from the foundry that help with this. I believe your enhanced lasers. Or there's basically uh, when you get pulse lasers. You get a uh, supercapacitors. I believe that's it. Supercapacitors to increase the fire rate of your ship lasers. That's going to carry you into the late game. Uh, wingtip sparrowhawks. Basically, you also get sparrowhawk missiles to fire at the same time from all your ships. Huge boost. Huge. All right. Those things to take into consideration. Watch your foundry. These, is gonna, these things are going to help you. You have to keep ahead of your enemies in the air war if you're playing at core. Alright, but now, once again... No, I was closing up earlier, but this time I'm for serial closing up. I just wanted to make this video so that you can kind of see the air war in its natural habitat. Well, it's the natural habitat that I would play in. Um, if you don't use the wad that extends the length of the intercept you're going to have a lot of things shot down, you're going to want to hurt your keyboard and face desk a lot. Uh, things are going to not be as fair. This makes it a little more fair. This, your judgment means more to do this. So I would suggest that. Um, when I upload this video to YouTube after I get done, I will put a link to that and it's also or to that mod. There's also a link for the mods I use in the first video on YouTube. <laughs> Excuse me once again. A little hoarse today. Um, but yeah, once again, thank you for watching. I do appreciate it greatly. Um, and I hope this is helpful to you. Alright, uh, well, if you have any feedback, uh, feel free to 
leave it for me on my Twitter, uh, which is linked in my information. Um, you can contact me through the uh, send me mails through Twitch or emails and so forth. Um, I'll double check to make sure I have an email up there. And you can get that to me, and I'll try to answer questions. I definitely want you to learn from it. I want to fill in the blanks. If I'm missing any information in any of these videos, uh, any of these streams that you would like to know, let me know. Okay? Because I want to help you get into Long War, and I want to help you win at Long War. Alright? Anyway, thanks for uh, coming on this, or listening to me as I come on this afternoon. For this a little bit shorter video, I know that uh, it's a little rambly, but uh, I hope that I have given you what tools you need for to get you into the air war and get you successful into the air war and know when to pick your battles in the air war. All right, uh, this is the X Team, and have a good afternoon.